Hi, I'm Donna Wilder. And I'm Janie Donaldson. Welcome to Quilt Central. Chickens aren't just in the coop. It's foul play today. We're taking our decorating theme out to the back deck. It's pure poultry in motion. And we're glad you're joining us on Quilt Central. Funding for Quilt Central has been provided by the American Quilter Society, dedicated to promoting today's quilter. Sulky of America, taking creativity to new heights with decorated threads, stabilizers, and books. Bernina of America, nothing sews like a Bernina, nothing. Fairfield, maker of polyfill fiber fill, pillow, batting, and foam products. The National Quilting Association, a nonprofit association promoting quilting and quilters. Quilting Machines International, providing quilting machines and supplies for the world. Free Spirit Fabrics, quilting fabrics with style. Come quilt with me. Turn your revolver instead of your template. Quilt Central, celebrating quilting in everyday living with your hosts Jane Donaldson and Donna Wilder. Once in a while you'll find just the perfect line of fabric to carry out a theme with your decorating. Let's go back out on the deck and take a look at what we found to do our deck. We're going to have our chicken party and so we selected a line of fabric to just create that perfect look for it. Starting with the table, set up with the food, you'll see we've used some chickens in the decoration. We have a big chicken sitting there, a basket with some chicken fabrics and the tablecloth. Then look at the pillows. There are so many ideas for making decorator pillows. We've created a large one with a chicken on it, another decorator pillow, and then we have chicken in the log. We're going to show you a little bit later on how that one is made, but we're going to focus today on our quilt. We're showing it here beautifully draped over the railing, and it's nice to have a quilt, whether it's hanging on the wall of the house or just to have out there on the cold nights for the picnic. Joining me today on Quilt Central is Luella Doss. Luella is a quilting expert for Bernina of America, the manufacturers of sewing machines. Welcome, Luella. Thank you, Donna. It's always a pleasure to be on your programs because you inspire me to be creative. Well, that's great. Now, I want to tell you something else. Luella is not only representing Bernina, but she is also the designer of the fabric line. This is called Foul Play, and it was designed for Free Spirit Fabric. This is great. Tell me a little bit about how you came up with this concept. Well, you know, on the farm, we always made everything from scratch. And so these chickens uh, inspired me to do that because that's what they do is scratch. Uh -huh. And so I wanted to capture their funky uh, spirit on the, on the surface of the fabric. And so the first thing I did was I painted chickens. Yep. And I just painted dots. And it grew into a hen. And then I painted a rooster, and it grew into a rooster. So the hens and roosters are dancing all over the oh. quilt. Well, you have some great names for them, oh. so let's talk a little about that. Uh, this is called uh, Chicken Dreams. Uh-huh. And uh, this is called A Thousand Chickens. Right. And this one right here is kind of unique. It's called Square Meal Deal. Okay. And the reason for that is, if you notice, there's a foot and a beak uh -huh. and a comb and an eye. Uh -huh. And when you're on a diet, which we are most of the time <laughs> these days, is that that's all you get. Square meal deal. That's true. <laughs> so um, anyway, in a way, some people say that it, because we eat so much chicken, uh -huh. this is a way to honor them. Oh, that's so, great. Um, it's so much fun. The chickens are here to stay, I think. Yeah. I, I saw that when I, when I started designing the quilt, I wanted to play with this fabric that was in this tile because uh -huh. it's funny and it's fun. And when I measured it, it was a perfect three-inch square. Oh, great. And so I took it and I just went right down the center of those uh, feet uh -huh. to make the seam. And that uh, worked out just fine. So in the quilt, there are four nine patches. Okay. Because that's how I started quilting with the nine patch. Mm -hmm. and I wanted to make it fun and simple. Then the sashings or the borders, instead of being plain, I made them into stars. They're wonderful. Because I wanted my chickens to be stars. Well, it took so. me a while. I looked at the pattern and mm -hmm. I'm thinking, where is that block design? And it took me a while to realize those stars, it had almost an optical illusion the way they create them at the corners. So. Well, I wanted them to look like chicken toes. Yeah. 
They Chicken did. feet. And, you know, to do that, I, I, I like to use a template right. because I want to make sure those points are going to be perfect. Good. And I like all the pieces of my puzzle to go back together again. Yeah. And so I like to lay them out like this so that I can see that it's all uh -huh. going to go together right because I hate uh -huh. to sew things more than once. Well, show them the two templates. You've used okay. two templates. I have two templates here. One I used when I cut it out. Right. And, and that's exact size. And you see that goes on the outside. And that way I know that it's nice and straight. Those uh, mm -hmm. These two angles right here are on the straight of the grain. And straight of the grain is so important when you're doing a right. quilt. And likewise then I took that and uh, put that right on there and drew around it. And that way I know that my puzzle pieces are going to go together. And that gives you right. your seam allowance to follow. Exactly. And you see I've drawn around this one. And now I'm ready to, I put my pins in. Uh -huh. right at the corner and I'm ready to sew. And I'm going to take that pin out and then put it, the needle right in that corner where I'm ready to go. Put the needle down right in that corner. I don't like to sew through the seam allowance. Do my little back stitch there and then go right on across knowing that this is going to be a perfectly accurate seam. And we end on that one little dot. Therefore, you haven't sewn through your seam allowances, right. and you can get, um, you won't have all that bunchiness on the, That's in, the, in, the in the seams. Press that back, mm -hmm. put your other side on, and then lay them all out. And then you can see where you're at. Okay. So then you're ready to go on to the off. next step. And we'll pull over the big pieces so that okay. we can start to see how that goes. Looking like a quilt now. Yep, it's Here's so exciting this. when Here you have this going on. And here we have another of the nine patches. Uh huh. And now you can see up a bit. how you, you sew them together in bars. Right. You know, with quilting, everything is in units. And mm -hmm. it's so nice and neat and simple. But yet, when you put it all together, it becomes a whole nother entity. So uh, this is the next step. So these are the these are your sashing strips. Exactly. And then you put that together, and it look at how that's starting to form the stars. Then mm -hmm. it's amazing, you know, that this is what it is. This is the sashing that's exactly. creating that look. Gosh, that's amazing. Well, I I enjoy it because uh, I like to start with simple things, uh -huh. and uh, there are only three templates well, to show this them quilt. How this once we get that together, then you have the next step is to put on the the border fabric, correct? You know, the earliest quilts were called central medallions. Uh -huh. And so I love to put borders on quilts. Oops, I see a big fuzzy there. And um, Here's so, this one. so you put on your, your plain strips. Mm -hmm. And you see, I, I sewed these together first. And then, uh, so I had less to go all around. Right. It makes it faster for me. And then I put my, my squares on. Uh -huh. And finally, you're ready to put that on. Now, when you work with the chicken dreams, you want to... and this is true of a lot of different fabrics. Right. Sometimes they do have an up and down. Mm -hmm. And these little chickens, they are going uh, up In and one down. Direction. And, yeah. <laughs> and so so uh, so when I'm I'm ready to put this on and uh, so you made sure that the heads were always exactly. up when you exactly. cut it. Right. And that's important when you're working with fabric. You have to kind of preview what your fabric looks exactly. like. Exactly. To make it how that uh, to make it work and to make it pleasing to look at when you're all done. Then finally, you're we ready get to that cut the back. large piece. Let me make sure we're going so that they can yes. read it up and down. Exactly. Oh, it looks so good. And so I've I've just sewn a couple big pieces of fabric together mm -hmm. on the back, and I always well, like to tell make, them what you did on the back. That's I like to fun. make the big. I just sewed it down yep. the center here, the and big then, fabric there. And so then I, I always like to make it three to six inches bigger uh -huh. than the top of my quilt. Okay. Now, are, so, how are you going to do your binding? Is that um, well, once I get it all quilted, right. now the quilt that I did, Oops, I did by go. machine, but I like to quilt by hand as well, uh -huh. as it, or uh, by uh, a large machine. Mm -hmm. So uh, it, it's everybody's preference, what okay. they want to do. And I pin it all over, and then finally cut it, and then I'm ready for the binding. And now this binding, I cut nice and wide to begin with, like this. Yes. And uh, then I fold it And that's on the over. bias? Yes, this is on the mm -hmm. bias. So. Uh, I just use my rotary cutter. That mm -hmm. makes it nice and even and slick. And uh, I pieced it together on the bias as well. Okay. Now, uh, sometimes when you work with a plaid, you want to make sure that the plaid's still going the right direction uh -huh. or you have a tint effect. So, you, you know, those are just little pointers to remember. And Finally, you do you're this ready folded to, double. Yes. That way, you know, 
when when children or even adults, when, the, the binding is what wears out first. You're right. So if you have the double binding, you, that works you, really you're well. in like Flynn because Good. things just work so nice. And then so I've done it wide enough so that I can make my half inch uh, mm -hmm. seam around here. Right. And then bring it over and I can machine or hand stitch it down. All the and way and down to finish it, the end. Yes. Well, that so, looks great. Well, thank well Luella, thank you for sharing your instructions on how to make, what's it called? Poultry in motion. Well, thank you for joining me. <laughs> and let's go back out on the porch once again to take a look at that quilt and see how lovely it looks. And while we're doing that, you'll notice, too, the setting on the beautiful table that we've gotten ready for our chicken party. We're going to show you now, when we go to Jane, how she quilted the fabric to make those chair cushions. This is a fun little fabric. Let's see what we can do with it. I'm going to first show you how we quilted this in w for the deck. But then I'm going to give you a couple other options to learn to do continuous line in blocks. We thought maybe we should quilt some leaves on this since it's outdoor fabrics and leaves fit anywhere. You can put them with any quilt because usually somewhere in the fabric there is a leaf or a flower, so it works. Now I wanted to get around the chicken and I didn't want to have to go back, so that we try to learn to go and not have to stop. It's faster and we like to go fast. So I'll put a little leaf right here and I'll work my way around that chicken on the bottom and put a leaf up there in between, maybe one at the feet. I can echo a little bit to get around these birds. Put another leaf. It's just kind of fun and at random. You should do, learn to do leaves because you can fill in with leaves. You can put them just about anywhere. In some quilts, like a grandmother's flower garden, if you fill in the background with leaves, you get the most Victorian, elegant look. And sometimes, just on this chicken fabric, they're just kind of a fun outdoor looking thing. Well, I'll just quilt a few more of these so that you can see that you can actually get around all the way around the blocks and not have to really stop. And in some instances, once you get the hang of it, you can actually go up or down several blocks and complete those before you go on to the next. I think you might have the idea of how that works. So I guess I'll stop and I'll reset my thread. Here, grab my scissors. And I'll reset it at the beginning so that I can show you another method of, of how to get a grid without stopping your quilting and matching the ends of all of your sewing. I can use these little flowers to go from block to block or corner to corner. And I'm going to wave my line a little just because this is a more whimsical type of a quilting. And so I go over, up, over, down. And you wonder, how is she going to match up those open areas? But I can tell you when I put the second row in, if I do the identical row, it fills in the space. And if you're doing a large piece, the only place that you have open places where you have to fill in is the very first row and the very last row. So let me put the second row in so you can see how that all matches up into a grid. It's a speedy method and it's easier to do than using the ruler and trying to match up your ends and having the reach be limited. And if you sew from edge to edge, your threads end up underneath your binding or into the seam, and you don't have to worry about those little ends of your thread anymore. I'll see if I go oops, over, down. If I go over here, that fills in the top of that space. Up on this one, over, down, and it fills in this, and I am just about a perfect grid. And I'll end about there. And if you can see, that's all interlocked. Just perfect. 
So, if you're quilting anything where you can mark off by the corners of the blocks, or you can see a pattern in there where you can go corner to corner, this would be the perfect kind of quilting to get it into grid. So don't be a chicken. Try some outdoor quilting and try to do it freehand in continuous line. My next guest is Ann Driscoll from Fairfield Processing Corporation, the maker of polyfill products. Ann is going to show us how to finish up some of the projects we looked at a little earlier out on the deck. Welcome, Ann. Thank you, Donna. What I'd like to do first is show you how the chair cushions were made from the fabric that Jane had quilted on the long arm quilting machine. Good, good. They were great. Yes. The first thing we do is we take a paper template of the mm -hmm. actual chair. Okay. Okay. And from the te um, paper template, we put that on the fabric that was okay. quilted. And we cut out a top piece and a bottom piece. Mm -hmm. Okay. After, and, and we also cut, cut out a middle section, which is the gusset piece. Okay. That's going to go in between the two. Exactly. Right? And then the next step we're going to do is we're going to cover cording. All right. Okay. Um, with fabric that we've chosen to coordinate uh -huh. with the print, we cover it, and then, that and then we attach it with the zipper foot of your machine, mm -hmm. All right, and then you pin it down to the top and to the bottom piece, okay. raw edges together, all the way around. Good. And then what I have here is I actually have the finished piece, the, uh -huh. the, the shell finished and piece. And you've left an opening there in the uh, back side. Exactly. So Big enough to put the densified batting cushion in okay. it. And that's what this piece is. Again, we, we've cut, cut that? that out of the mm -hmm. same template. And this is nice. Yes, it's it nice is. And firm. It's firm. It's um, actually densified batting, mm -hmm. compressed batting. Um, it holds its whiteness and its shape. Um, it's water resistant as well. So And let's take a look. It, this it is finishes the, up really nicely. Yes, it does. This is the finished cushion. Great. And it's beautiful. Well, this is great, but this little character has been intriguing me now. What is this one? That is our chicken on a log bolster uh -huh, pillow. Uh -huh. Okay. And let me tell you about that. This actually is the pillow that's inside of it. Mm -hmm. It's a finished pillow, okay. um, bolster pre made pillow with uh -huh. some siliconized fiber in it for durability and, and it holds its shape. Okay. I've measured that mm -hmm. and then added um, the seam allowance, the quarter inch okay. seam allowance extra. And sewing the two short ends together, mm -hmm. leaving an opening. Okay. At that point. Yes, the two ends are open, but the two mm -hmm. ends are open so that I can attach the um, the circular end, the, the right. actual ends of the, the And you've itself. measured those across and exactly. added the seam allowance again. For them. Good. And then you just ease in, pin stitch it, that. and you stitch it all the way around, and you stitch both of them closed. Uh-huh. Okay, and then you have the finish to cover. Okay. And then with the opening, you put your bolster pillow in. Mm -hmm. And then you have the actual like finish. That. Exactly. That's great. But the fun steps with uh -huh. this are, let me start with the, the chicken legs that are okay. hanging out of the side of Good. the log. Uh, again, in a tube-like rectangle. Mm -hmm. So the two short ends together right. all the way. Okay. Um, and then at that point, I have my tube. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to fill that up with some fiber, a nice loft fiber. Give it some fullness to get this. And then you sew the exactly. end on that one. Okay. Right, that end. And that step's ready. That step, I'll put that aside. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to work on the feet, okay. the toes, Good. that section. Cutting out my right sides yes. together. Pieces. Sew them, right sides together, pin and sew them. Mm -hmm. And then what I've done is I've sewed it all the way around. I haven't left an opening. I put the opening oh. right here in the center of the actual fabric. That's okay. for turning later. Um, I've clipped real yeah. close on the curves mm -hmm. to give it a nice crisp finish and then turned it and you'll see the opening. So that, that when opening, that's stuffed, that'll exactly. kind of hide that opening there. Right. Now tell me about the head. That's the fun part. This part is actually made with a positive and a negative okay. fabric. Mm -hmm. Okay. And one of the sections are put together with the needle punch batting. Good. Okay. And that gives it some stability. Absolutely. And so it stands up. And then what we put the other section, the negative of it, together. Without batting. Exactly. Pin it right sides together mm -hmm. with the batting. 
And what, what we're going to do is we're going to sew around a quarter inch around the scallops. Right. And then we're going to trim our batting away. Right. And okay. then you turn it right side out. Exactly. And we stuff a little polyfill in there, mm -hmm. I would think. Let me yes. do a little of that. Adding your comb and your gusset and yeah. your beak yeah. with the same stability of the fiber. And then we put that on there. Mm -hmm. One and you leg add your there. legs. And One there leg you there. have the pillow. That's great. It is. Thanks it's a wonderful for bringing You're welcome. That. Dee Pitan is back, and she is from the National Quilting Association. She's the president of the board. Hi, Dee. Hi. It's nice to be back. Oh, I'm so glad to have you. Tell us a little bit more about the NQA show itself. Well, we usually display 425 quilts, and we're not a juried show, so the first 425 quilts that come in are in the show. That's a lot of work to hang that many quilts. That's a lot of work for, and we have a local guild that does all the hard work, so we need a, a local guild in the area to sponsor our show. Mm -hmm. um, it gets us to the areas where our members are so that they can come to the show. What do they do each day, or how long is the show? The show is four days. It starts Wednesday evening with an opening reception where anyone that is registered for the show can come. Um, we have the teachers there and they can talk to the teachers and learn a little bit about what their classes are going to be. Um, Thursday night is the show starts on Thursday and Thursday evening we have our annual meeting. Uh, we also have an unfinished obje objects auction which for the, it was called UFO auction. I have been to one of those and they it's hysterical. have wonderful, it's, wonderful quilts. It's, yeah, it's really a funny part of our show and we have a good time. Um, Friday night is our banquet. Uh, we have a speaker. Um, that's usually the highlight of the uh, weekend. Saturday is our little quilt auction and that benefits our grants program, which is a very important program for us. And Sunday, the show's over. It runs from 10 to 3 on Sundays. Okay, can you tell us a little bit more about the contest itself? Um, we give ribbons, first, second, third place, and honorable mention. We give uh, best of show ribbon to best hand quilted, best machine quilted. Um, so there are four basic ribbons. And then we let our guests that come to see the show vote on their favorite quilt. Is there a lot of different types of quilting in the show? Do they accept everything? They accept the first 425 quilts, whether they're traditional art quilts, whatever. Okay. So, but it, amazing as it may seem, we do get some of the best quilts in the country. And then what else is there besides the show? Is there other things there to see? Is there vendors or? There are vendors from different shops and manufacturers. Um, we have um, quite a few. That's It's quite prestigious to be in our show. So um, that gives everyone a chance to spend some of their so money. We could go shopping. Yes, <laughs> shopping is right. That plastic really gets warm. Uh -huh. during that weekend. So it's a large vendor show, I would It's imagine. quite a few vendors. Um, because your whole organization is contest and everything, that's like 30 years old? Yes. Yeah, that's a, um, so the first show started locally in the Maryland area, yeah. and then they decided to branch oh, out. I'm so excited. I would mm -hmm. love to get to the next one. I hope I'll be able to do that. Yes, it's in Charlotte, North Carolina, uh -huh. 2002. Okay. And the... Um, the teachers, they all just travel and go from show to show, so you'll have a yeah, we have wide national. variety of education. Right. Well, we have nationally known teachers. Um, one of them is usually our biggest teacher, is usually the one that gives the speech or the lecture at the banquet. So if you want to see somebody that you can't travel to see, this is one way to do it, to learn from the best. That would be good. Yeah, I would like to take some <laughs> right. classes there because they have everything from machine to hand quilting. Everything. Um, machine classes, hand quilting, applique, and piecing. The judges. You have judge classes there too. So yes, we do have the judging That's seminar. Because mm -hmm. you can't get that just everywhere. That's it takes a, it takes a lot of study to become a judge. Yeah, it's, it's very a lot of involved. To mm -hmm. your program to get through that, isn't right. it? Right. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm real excited about this, and I hope that you'll all seek out the National Quilters Association. Where can they find you, or how can they contact you? You can visit our web page and find out all the information you need. Well, that's great. I am so glad you came to have this chat today. And I hope you'll come back again sometime. Yeah, it's been fun.
visit the Quilt Central website at www.quiltcentraltv.com for more information on this program. Wasn't that fantastic fabric that Luella brought us for the deck? It was great and it was fun to see how all the projects came together for a great decorating theme. And she has some wonderful ideas on her own. She sure does and thank you for joining us today. We'll see you next time on Quilt Central. for Quilt Central has been provided by the American Quilter Society dedicated to promoting today's quilter. Sulky of America taking creativity to new heights with decorated threads, stabilizers, and books. Bernina of America nothing sews like a Bernina. Nothing. Fairfield maker of polyfill fiber fill pillow, batting, and foam products. The National Quilting Association, a nonprofit association promoting quilting and quilters. Quilting Machines International, providing quilting machines and supplies for the world. Free Spirit Fabrics, quilting fabrics with style. <laughs>